Hi, I was making a flyback transformer and I want to document this process. Reason why I am doing this is because I don't want the internal diode that most flybacks nowadays do have and kinda because I can. Now as you can see here the output voltage is not that great. I would able it to some 5 to 10 kV. But on the other hand I am not driving this transformer very hard. This transformer has very inferior electrical insulation. You can very much hear the corona inside the transformer itself. So you really need to use a spark gap. But other than that it works pretty well and I am happy with it. Ok, enough of goofing around and let's look at the construction. So you will need a core, I am using core from PC power supply. Something onto which you will wind your wires. Wire from your secondary, I am using 0.05mm diameter copper wire. And some other stuff like tape, scissors, knife, tin, soldering iron, calipers and whatnot. And I almost forgot, a baking paper. I will be using this to provide additional electrical insulation between the layers on the secondary side. There are for sure better materials, but this works. Cut some stripes from the baking paper to make insulation. And I start winding the wire. You pretty much need to align the starts of these windings and then the process is... Not that bad, let me say that. So here you can see what the overall setup looks like. It's nothing high tech really. I am holding the copper wire on whatever. Then I am using bearing extractor as the wire guide that is mounted on the magnet. Ok, so here goes first layer. There are a few fuck ups and it does not look as good as it should maybe. But I need practice with such thin wire. Previously I used about 150 micrometer diameter wire. Not really sure but whatever. Now here goes the insulation. This is also a very finicky process for the first time. Basically do one turn, cut it so it overlaps a little bit, then align the copper wire. Basically do first few turns with your hand. This will make the paper to hold its shape and you are pretty much sure that it will be good when you start the process. Well, it should be. You can see that I am quite careful with the start here. I really did not want the wire to cross itself. So overall my quality is not that good, but I will improve a lot. Now here you can see the whole setup in the process. And the overall thing is a lot more automatic than you would imagine. You can see here that I am moving the spindle of the light itself, but you can basically move the assembly which you hold your wire with. There is no real point of doing this precisely. Now when I am done I use the electrical tape to basically secure the wire in position. So you will end with something like this. Then I aligned the wire to the outside and where I want it to be and wrapped the tape around a little bit more. There is really quite a high risk of arcing over to the core and basically from any sharp points. 
Then I wrap a whole transformer in the tape, basically to hold the core together, and applied a little bit of hot melt glue to prevent arcing, basically. And now it's time to test this thing. Well, 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 it's very suboptimal, I would say. With the first transformer, I remember that I had to sweep the frequency range to find the optimal working point, basically. I think this will be the most important issue here. There may be other problems. Of course, these transformers are not designed to do this. I will have to investigate this a bit more. Obviously, if you are into math, use math. Well, anyway, I wanted to focus this video more on the construction itself, not on the functionality. So yeah, once again, next time. Bye.